When it comes to an irrigation system, there are tons of parts all working together. This video is going to give you a very brief overview of the devices, products, and concepts that make up your sprinkler system. I'm Dwayne Smith, your sprinkler warehouse product specialist. Let's get started. First up, water pressure. Water pressure is force applied to water, which pushes it through the piping. Water pressure is measured in PSI, that's pounds per square inch. Too little pressure and your sprinklers won't operate correctly. You'd have to reduce the number of sprinklers operating at once or use different nozzles to work around that issue. Too much and your sprinklers will mist, which means you'll be wasting water. There are pressure regulators which can be installed in your system to deal with the too much pressure issue and there are pressure regulating valves and pressure regulating sprinkler heads as well. Flow rate is how much water travels through your pipes at any one time. It's measured in GPM, that's gallons per minute. Your flow rate indicates how much water is available to your sprinkler system. Pipe diameter. Most residential sprinkler pipes are gonna be one inch or three quarter inch and occasionally one and a quarter inches. The diameter of your pipe limits your flow rate. Depending on where you live, your irrigation pipes may be made of PVC or polyethylene, AKA polypipe. Fittings for PVC pipe are also made out of PVC and are attached using PVC primer and glue. Polypipe uses a variety of fittings, most frequently barb style fittings. Sprinklers are the objects that spray water onto the landscape. They come in many different styles, rotors, impacts, sprays, rotary nozzles, and bubblers are the most common types. Notice that sprays and rotary nozzles use the same body, there's just different nozzles. Rotors and sprays are the most frequent. Most landscapes will have rotors watering the lawn and sprays in the flower beds. The types of sprinklers chosen will depend on the needs of the landscape, the water pressure, and the flow available. Sprinklers, whether they are rotors or spray heads, limit the amount of water they throw by the use of nozzles. Nozzles come with differing gallons per minute ratings. That gallon per minute rating is not absolute. It varies by the water pressure going into the sprinkler head. When an irrigation system is designed, flow rate, water pressure, pipe diameter, the number and types of sprinkler heads, and which nozzles are installed all have to be taken into account. Not all of your landscape can be watered simultaneously due to limits of water pressure and water flow. Zones divide your landscape into sections that accommodate the amount of water pressure and flow that is available to your system. Zones are also configured for areas that may have differing watering needs, such as flower beds, vegetable gardens, and lawns. Valves start and stop the flow of water into a zone. Each zone has one valve that controls it. Valves are usually either inline valves or anti-siphon. Inline valves are located below ground in a valve box and require a separate backflow prevention device. Anti-siphon valves include a built-in backflow prevention device, and because of this, they have to be installed above ground. Valve boxes are used to house valves underground and allow easy access for maintenance. They come in various sizes. Larger boxes can hold multiple valves. They're used mainly for inline valves, but can be used for other components such as flow sensors, water meters, and cutoff valves. Valves are often grouped together in a manifold. By grouping valves, it increases the ease of maintenance and often reduces the cost of piping. Backflow preventers, often just called backflows, are devices that are used to prevent back siphonage or back pressure from contaminating drinking water. Most water districts require that some type of backflow prevention device be installed in an irrigation system. Laws and regulations in your area may require a specific type of backflow and specify where it can be installed. As I mentioned earlier, anti-siphon valves come with a backflow device built into the valve. The most common type of backflow device in residential areas is the pressure vacuum breaker, which has to be installed in line between the water main and the irrigation system. It has to be at least 12 inches higher than the highest sprinkler head in your system. Other types of backflows include reduced pressure zone assemblies and double check valves. Depending on where you're located, those might be more common. The controller, also called the clock or timer, is the brain of your system. It sends a signal to the valves to tell them when to turn on and off. A controller keeps a regular schedule for your irrigation system. It allows you to choose the frequency, time of day, and length of each watering cycle. 
and it allows you to set different watering times for different zones to meet the particular needs of your landscape. Smart controllers are a step up from the basic model of controllers. Smart controllers can utilize Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to interact with your smart devices. With smart controllers, you can program your controller from your computer or smart device, and you can receive alerts. Some smart controllers can interact with local weather stations and adjust watering accordingly, saving you money and possibly sparing your landscape from being overwatered. Sensors are another way to save money and protect your landscape from over or underwatering. Rain or rain and freeze sensors put watering on hold when the weather is inappropriate for watering. Moisture sensors determine the level of moisture in the soil, and wind sensors prevent watering when it's windy enough to blow a substantial amount of water onto the neighbor's lawn. Flow sensors are special types of sensors that are installed into a section of irrigation pipe and they monitor your water usage. Flow sensors can alert you if there's a leak or a broken valve, which would save you a lot of money and can even save your landscaping. If you want a flow sensor, you'll need an appropriate smart controller that can communicate with a flow sensor. And not all controllers work with all flow sensors, and some only work with very specific flow sensors. Wires run underground from the controller to the valves. Each zone has a hot wire that goes directly to a valve, and then a common wire goes from one valve to the next in a daisy chain and back to the controller. Irrigation wire is either 16 gauge or 18 gauge for residential systems. When running 16 gauge wire like this, there should be at least one colored wire, which will be the hot wire, and a white wire, which will be the common. There's also multi-conductor wire like this. This is 18 gauge. Multiple hot wires are bundled together along with one white wire. It works really well if your valves are all together in a manifold. Multi-conductor wire can save you money in the right situation. Drip is different than the typical sprinkler system, although a drip system can be tied into your regular sprinkler system. In a drip system, water is delivered directly to plant roots through the use of emitters. There is a drip hose, which has emitters embedded in regular intervals, or a series of tubes can be run to position emitters like these directly at plant roots, so each plant gets precisely the amount of water that it needs. Drip systems usually use a much lower water pressure than typical sprinkler systems. If a drip system is incorporated into a typical sprinkler system, the drip system will be a separate zone. It has a separate valve and will need pressure regulator to reduce the water pressure going into the system. Drip systems can be underground, i.e. subsurface, or above ground. Well, that should get you a jump start into your overall sprinkler knowledge. We have a ton of videos covering each of these concepts and products in greater detail. Go check those out. Questions? Chat with one of our incredible customer service agents on sprinklerwarehouse.com. They really do know their stuff and they'll get you squared away. Get everything you need for that next landscape project from Sprinkler Warehouse, a proud member of the Heritage Landscape Supply Group. Your success is our heritage. Sprinkler Warehouse, America's most shop sprinkler store. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for helpful tips, tutorials, and general sprinkler instruction.